yeah, so they're making a political scene. We, we Democrats, Republicans. Uh, no, this is not vodka. This is, I promise you, water. Kings down water. I don't drink vodka. Um, so we'll talk about a little bit about the, the American political scene coming up to the, the, the uh, midterms, the midterms in about a month, I guess less than a month. It's November, November 8th or something like that. Uh, so, um, uh, so less than a month. And, um, you know, w- what's going to happen and, and what do we kind of want to happen and, and what, is, what is the status of politics in, um, in the United States. And the case I made uh, during the session at the, um, at the uh, Battle of Ideas it was really that what has happened in America is that both political parties basically are, are, are very difficult to differentiate when it comes to economic policy that uh, at least at the level of legislation, at the big picture level, both political parties now believe that the government has a big role to play in the economy. Uh, both political parties now believe that industrial policy is legit. We saw a significant number of Republicans voting for the CHIP bill, uh, the bill that tries to pick winners and losers in the chip industry and tries to subsidize American producers of chip technology. Um, we're seeing uh, ever-growing uh, voices both on the left and on the right for more government intervention, for more government uh, uh, industrial policy, uh, for more uh, government control of trade. And really, when it comes to our economic liberties, there is no longer any political party that is uh, supportive of economic liberty, even the pretense of economic liberty, because you could argue that the Republican Party were never for economic liberty, but at least they gave it lip service. That's gone. They, they no longer do that. And that has a lot to do with the fact that the voters who vote for the Republican Party now are not interested in economic liberty. And, and by the way, this is the same, uh, the, the exact same situation, I would argue, is in the UK. And this relates to the whole Liz Truss fiasco. And maybe I'll, I'll combine things here. But the, the reality is that the people who elected Boris Johnson to a, to a you know, historic victory and, and to a majority in the House of Commons um, was it two, two and a half years ago or three years ago? Um, the voters who voted him in were not voting in somebody, and they didn't, uh, the intention was not to vote in somebody who was pro free markets. Their intention was to vote somebody who would uh, regulate, control, who would, um, uh, who would centrally plan, but who they associated with their kind of cultural policies anti-immigration, anti-Europe, um, and, and, and generally a, um, a, a kind of conservative social agenda. Uh, buffering. I don't see the buffering. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I am on hotel Wi-Fi, so it is a challenge. And I noticed the speed today is lower than the speed was on Wednesday. So it could be it could be that the hotel is fuller and the more people using the internet right now and that's causing some buffering. I hope not. I hope it doesn't disrupt the show too much. Um, let's see where were we? Um, yes. So um, the constituency voted in Boris Johnson is not exactly a free market constituency, and I got a real sense of that. Uh, on you know you always if you want to know what's going on in England if you really want to know how people are feeling in England and what they think probably your best bet is to start a conversation with your taxi driver um, in in one of your black cabs one of the reasons I don't take Uber uh, or I take uh, I don't always take Uber I, I usually take Uber but I also take taxis is because taxis are all driven by Brits opinionated Brits. Uber are all driven by immigrants. Now, I have nothing against immigrants, as you know, and I actually like chatting with the immigrants. But if you really want to know what's going on among the electorate in the UK, the people to talk to are the taxi drivers. Like, I knew that Brexit was going to pass because every single taxi driver I talked to was pro-Brexit. They were going to vote for Brexit. They were passionate about Brexit. They were advocating for it. They were arguing for it. They were active in the movement to bring it about. So, uh, so I was in a taxi the other day and here in, in London and I was talking to the guy 
and he asked me what I do, and I said I, I give talks about about capitalism, about you know, and he said, you know, I'm not. He says I'm not for free markets. I, I said, you know, why? He says, well, because because I hate Uber. He said, uh, you know, Uber is irresponsible. They pay the drivers too little. They they exploit their drivers. Um, you know, these people barely make a living at Uber. And I said, you know, what's the alternative? If they don't do Uber, don't they make even a worse living? He didn't have an answer to that. But but you know, he was like. Uh, I believe in regulations. I'm very pro-regulations. You know, I, I like Boris Johnson's government uh, because they weren't going to deregulate and, and uh, you know, list Trust is going to deregulate. That's really, really bad. And uh, I don't want taxes cut on the rich and and uh, and so on. So very much kind of economic populism, very much left of center economics. And yet on almost every social issue, very anti-immigration, very, uh, uh, you know, very pro uh, again, pro Brexit, very, uh, uh, very pro kind of uh, uh, British culture and what it means to be British, and probably on all the other issues that are, you know, whether it's trans or whether it's woke or whether it's whatever, very conservative. And that I think is is the Republican Party uh, or the base of the Republican Party, and that I think is the base of the of the Conservative Party. So when when Liz Truss uh, backs off of tax cuts, when Liz Truss back off is going to back off of, of deregulation. Well, Liz Trust probably will back off of, of advocating for fracking in the UK. Uh, she's doing it, we'll talk about markets in a minute, but she's doing it to a large extent to appease her voters. Her voters don't want this stuff. Her voters don't want markets, don't want you know individual liberty when it applies to markets. They want regulation. They want the state involved. They want controls. And they don't want fracking. Now, you know, we'll get, I guess we'll get to list trust on the response of the markets and, and why the markets responded the way they do. I think, I think um, Rob has a question about that in the super chat. And I think the same thing is, is true in the United States. Today, the, the, the Republican base is not a base that believes in free markets. I mean, I, I, I already start sensing this in the Tea Party days when uh, they would say, keep your hands, uh, you know, uh, uh, we want limited government, we want to shrink government, we want to make government smaller, but keep your hands off my Medicare. Keep your hands off of the social programs that I like. Give your hands off of the redistribution of wealth that I like. Of course, they don't think of it as redistribution of wealth. We're just getting our money back. We paid into Medicare. Yeah, but you're taking out four times what you put in, and, and, and what you put in was already spent. What you're taking out is what other people are being taxed on. But... It, It's um, so what you get in the United States, like I think in the UK, is uh, a, 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 a distrust of free markets. And uh, what defines the Republican Party, or, or again, the base, the voters, the, the passionate voters, the excited voters, the voters who vote in the primaries, what defines them much more, or the social, pro, or the social issues, what defines them much more is the anti left. What defines them much more is the anti-woke, anti-cancer culture, anti-CRT. What defines them much more is anti, at least with the men, anti-abortion, although I think many uh, female Republicans are actually pro-abortion, even if they won't state it, which, which is going to be play, which might play havoc for the Republicans in the midterms. We'll see. We'll see how big of an issue it becomes. But um, the... Uh, uh, the um, uh, Basically, uh, the point I made at the Battle of Ideas was there is no voice today, no voice in America today. And I think this is true of the UK. There is no voice in politics. There's no public voice, uh, if, you include, if you include public intellectuals. There's no voice today, public or, or among the intellectuals or in politics, that is an advocate of individualism, that's an advocate of individual rights, that's an advocate of the original American vision. There's no advocate for the, for the, uh, for the Declaration of Independence. There are many advocates for all kinds of, uh, you know, their interpretation of all kinds of ideas of what America stands for, but the actual original idea of America, the idea of individual rights, the idea of, free, of, of freedom, liberty, the idea of, of, of being left alone, the idea of, ultimately, the idea of free markets, that's what the ideas in America resulted in. There are no defenders of that. 
Now, look, you can find a particular congressman here. You can find maybe one or two senators. Maybe you can find maybe a, a, somebody in the House of Commons who believe in this. As I said, I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, Kem, Kemi Bradenock. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I think she's good. Uh, she's in the government. Uh, she's a minister in the government. But uh, as a movement, as a, as a, as a phenomenon, there just no, there are no voices for these things. And even the voices that exist are muted. They're not, they're not aggressive, and they can't defend themselves. And one of the big problems Liz Truss had when she presented a budget that involves massive tax cuts, eliminating the tax cuts on the very wealthy, um, no, no uh, uh, spending cuts, unfortunately, but, but a, lot of, uh, a lot of tax cuts. Corporate taxes were going to be lower to 19%. I mean, good stuff. Anytime you lower corporate taxes, that's good stuff. That was the... One of the few good things that uh, Donald Trump did was lower the corporate tax. She couldn't defend it. And nobody in her party stepped up forward to defend it. Uh, the, the, the Chancellor of the Exchequer couldn't defend it, even though I think he believes in it, believed in it, he's gone now. Um, he couldn't defend it. He couldn't articulate the case for it. Because even if, even if they you know, harken back to, a, to an era of Thatcher and love of Thatcher and belief that Thatcher's ideas are the right ideas. They don't really understand the, the, the basis for them, the foundations for them, and they can't articulate it to an, a public, left and right, who doesn't want to hear it, who's not interested in liberty, not interested in economic liberty, not interested in liberty at all. So, I, I, you know, I think we've got a, a system in the United States today where both, politi both political parties are anti-liberty, both political parties are anti-economic liberty, and they're fighting over control of our minds, control of our spirits. Each of them wants to control the educational institutions so that they can impose their dogma on us. If you read the National Conservatives, you know that they do not like school choice. They do not like the idea of privatizing education. They want to control education. They want to get rid of woke. But what do they want to institute instead of woke? Well, Christianity, Christian virtues, Christian values, a Christian interpretation of history. So what the left and right today are battling over is control of our minds, control of our spirits. Both have come to the conclusion. Both have come to the conclusion that that's where the battle is. And indeed, both have come to the conclusion that in order to fully control our spirits, because Republicans always wanted to control this to some extent, they also need to control our wallets. And they all, so they, they all need to, to also be um, economically for central planning. Now, uh, you know, it was an interesting panel. We had a, uh, a kid from, uh, a student from UCLA on the panel who was kind of a centrist who voted for Donald Trump once and didn't vote for him the second time. Uh, we had a, a British academic who studies the American political system. We had a journalist who has children in the U.S. and uh, runs a media company, I guess. And uh, what was kind of funny was that everybody in the panel was ultimately anti-Trump. Now, almost all the panel was anti-Trump because of what he did during the election, that post-election, that is his refusal to accept the fact that he lost. I was the only one who was actually anti-Trump because of everything else. Um, they were actually kind of, particularly the, the, the woman uh, uh, media company person and the student, were actually pro-Trump as president, just anti-Trump as ex-president. That was the only one who was anti-Trump uh, throughout. And I think the, the, the British scholar was probably uh, uh, somewhat of a leftist. What... Um, what was interesting is how many people in the audience were pro-Trump, how much pushback we got from the audience on the fact that we were anti-Trump and how much, how much they tried to defend Trump and tried to defend uh, Trump's legacy. So th that was just interesting. His was, here were the Brits trying to defend Trump um, uh, at, at, uh, on this panel, uh, in front of this panel. Um, let's see, a few more points I, uh, I wanted to make with regard to the actual midterm election. I, I think, you know, the, the expectation of as a midterm election uh, and the first term of a president, at least in recent history, has been overwhelming victory by the opposition. Um, and indeed, given inflation at 
eight point something percent, core inflation at six point five percent, interest rates going up, recession on the horizon, and uh, becoming realer and realer, I think, to people as the months go by. The expectation should be of a massive red wave and 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 a, and a really a, a, a huge Republican victory. And it is still possible that 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 will happen. I don't think we can rule it out. The media has basically ruled it out. Most pundits have ruled it out. But the fact is that the media and the pundits and the pollsters almost always underestimate um, the populist right. They always, almost always underestimate the attractiveness of uh, kind of Republican right wing in other countries candidates. We saw that recently with Bolsonaro in Brazil who got a lot more votes, a, a much higher percentage of the vote, even though he didn't win uh, in the first round. He got a lot more votes than, than any poll predicted that he would get. So the left usually does be- worse than what the polls project, and the right usually does better than what the polls project. So uh, now they, some of the polls, stirs have uh, adjusted their polls uh, to reflect uh, this bias in the polls. But overall, I think the bias holds and, and, and uh, it still exists. It, it, it is possible that there will be a huge sweep uh, by Republicans. I think it's unlikely, though. I, I do think that um, a couple of things are hurting Republicans. Uh, I'd say uh, first is abortion. I think the issue of abortion is a big issue. Uh, it, I think it hurts Republicans um, in a lot of different places. And it's not that... It just hurts Republicans because it motivates Democrats to come to the polls more. It does. I think it, 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 it because particularly Democratic women, young women, women who, who would probably not vote at all in a midterm election might vote this time because they view it as a vote on abortion. So I think there is more likelihood that, that younger people will vote, women will vote. And of course, Republican women who, who actually tend to be pro-abortion um, are more likely to vote um, Democratic as, a, as, again, protest vote against the abortion rulings. How big that is, I don't think anybody knows. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. And there's a sense in which that, the abortion issue, is offset by other cultural issues. Again, I don't think there's much difference between the parties when it comes to economics. But what there is a difference is when it comes to these cultural issues. So for example, the more the Democrats call, talk about CRT, the more that is in the headlines, the more that is the cancel culture and woke and, and critical race theory, the more that helps Republicans. I mean, uh, the, the, the average person, the middle of the road person who's not, who's not particularly um, committed to the Democrats or the Republicans is, hates CRT, hates woke. And, and the more Republicans can associate the Democratic Party with woke culture, um, the more Republicans are likely to win, uh, are likely to win. So I don't think there's enough of that to offset the abortion issue, but it's, this is so that's going to somewhat mitigate the Republican success, but I do think Republicans will win the House. Um, they could win the House quite solidly. Um, the Senate is a different story. See, the Senate, Republicans should win the Senate easily, right? They should be able to hold Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, um, uh, you know, I think Donald Trump lost Pennsylvania by a very small margin. Um, a good candidate who could rally uh, Trump voters plus uh, voters who wouldn't vote for Trump, but generally Republican. Uh, easily, Pennsylvania should have been a Republican state. It might not be. Uh, Dr. Oz, that great Republican candidate, is uh, is lagging and and uh, is is does not necessarily look like um, he's going to win. Um, in um, let's see, so that's that's a flip. That's a Republican Senate seat that goes Democratic. Um, in Wisconsin, while I think ultimately the Republicans will win the Senate seat in Wisconsin, they're gonna it's going to be tight, and they're going to be holding on by by uh, by very slim margins. In uh, Georgia. Georgia is a Democratic seat. It's a Democratic Senate seat, which is hard to believe that Georgia is Democratic. And I'm not sure the Republicans can retake it. Maybe they can. But it's not clear at all 
the Republicans can take uh, can take Georgia given the candidate that they have. So, um, you know, that still is if, if, if the Democrats hold Georgia, that's still a plus one for the Democrats. And then you've got Arizona. Again, Arizona should be Republican. They should be able to win one of the two Arizona seats should be Republican. Maybe one Democratic, one Republican reflects a 50-50 kind of split in Arizona and, and maybe some other states. But both senators are going to be Democratic unless Blake Masters pull up, pulls off a, a, a real comeback in the next few weeks, which is possible, I guess. So now we have, um, now we have a, uh, uh, again, Democrats are still plus one. The only seat that it looks like the Republicans are in a position to flip from the Democrats is um, is Nevada. Uh, Nevada is a Democratic senator. Um, uh, the Republican looks strong in Nevada. Uh, Hispanics look like uh, they're more likely to vote a Republican. Um, Hispanic vote, I've said for a long, long time, on almost all issues, particularly cultural issues, is a Republican vote to lose. Uh, it was always a Republican vote to lose. Uh, you know, Republicans... Unfortunately, the significantly alienated, um, significantly alienated uh, their um, this constituency for many years over the issues of immigration, but are now starting to regain them and uh, and bring them bring them into the Republican fold. So Nevada, because of the Hispanic vote shifting to Republicans or more of it shifting to Republicans, could be a Republican Senate. And then we've got. 50-50, we've got a, a stalemate in the Senate, um, which means the, the Democrats own it because they have the vice president. Now, um, I don't mind that that much because uh, Republicans will have the House. You need both houses to get anything done. Um, so they it will basically be a stalemate to the Senate, to the, uh, to the Democrats, and that's all I really want. What I want is divided government. Um, I want is... is uh, Nothing to get done. I, I, as I've many so, said many times, um, the worst government is when they get together and they actually get stuff done. The, the stuff they get done is never friendly to individual rights. It's never friendly to liberty. It's never friendly to us. Uh, so uh, I love divided government. So I think we're going to get divided government out of this election. So I'm. I hope. Um, I hope you vote. I'm not going to tell you how to vote in the Senate. It depends on what state you are. And, vote whatever whatever you think is right. But in the House, I generally would encourage you, particularly if it's not a Trumpian candidate, to vote Republican because I, I, I'd like to see the Republicans at least win one of the Houses. Uh, it's also always fun to watch the Democrats lose. But um, yeah, it would be good. It would be good for the Republicans to win the House. Uh, Senate, uh, you know, I think a big part of the Senate is not so much the abortion issue. It's not the challenge of getting the voters and, and the right voters and women voting against the Republican and so on. I think the main challenge is the quality of the candidates. I, I, there's, there's, Republicans should have been able to nominate somebody better than Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania. I think they, they could have nominated somebody better than Blake Masters in Arizona. They could have nominated somebody better than, uh, than Walker in Georgia. I think all of those three states should be Republican states. They should be leading in the polls. I think with better candidates, they would be leading in the polls. And again, it's not its not a question of um, the actual policies that they advocate for. It's a question of their character and their personalities. And it's a, it's a question of also the fact of how committed they are to Donald Trump and how committed they are to the lie of, of the elections being stolen. Uh, it's, it's the mindlessness that they project rather than kind of an independence of thought now, they won because of Donald Trump. They won the primary because of Donald Trump. But they might lose the general election because of Donald Trump. And this is the thing. Donald Trump, if he ran today for president, would win the Republican primary. But I think, and I've said this for two years now, I think he's the only Republican who would lose to Joe Biden. I think in this economic environment, any Republican would beat Joe Biden. But I'm not sure Donald Trump could beat Joe Biden because of Donald Trump's negatives, because a, a, a lot of... The voters, the Donald, the Republicans need in order to win a presidential election, uh, suburban voters, uh, w w women, um, middle class voters, uh, won't vote for Trump. They'll vote for a, a different Republican, but they won't vote for Trump.
I, I think I think DeSantis has a good chance of beating uh, of beating uh, uh, Biden. And I think I think uh, Nikki Haley has a good chance of. I saw a tweet from Nikki Haley. Somebody sent me a tweet from Nikki Haley, which was excellent. She's still my lead candidate, but I never get my wishes in terms of uh, uh, candidates. Um, yeah, M H O H says. Clinton was the only Democrat who could lose to Trump. I think that's probably right. I think that's probably right. Um, God. All right. Before Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.